So let's look at certain questions regarding the standard. So we, these questions will give you a better understanding. If you want to solve more questions, then you will have to make sure that you're taking more questions from the ICA study material. But remember study material is a Bible. You cannot go here and there from study material. Stick to study material that will always give you a better idea. Okay, study materials, model test papers, revision test papers. These are your core material which should form part of your preparation. Now some authors material has 100 questions, 150 questions. You need to understand that you are solving this quest, this particular quest problems for clearing the exam. So exam conducted by ICI, material from ICI is the best. Clear? Let's look at the first question here. XYZ is into manufacturing of tractor parts and mainly supplying components to the original equipment manufacturer. The company does not have any subsidiary, joint venture or associate. During the preparation of financial statements for the year ended 31st March, the accounts department is not sure about the treatment and presentation of the below mentioned matters. The accounts department has approached you to advise in the following matters. So look at the matters that he's asking you. He's asking you to advise him on that. So XYZ is manufacturing tractor parts mainly for supplying to the original equipment manufacturer. There are qualifications in the audit report of the company with reference to two Indias. Guys, whenever you have qualifications regard to Indias, what do you do? The company has to still give an explicit unreserved statement of compliance. But along with that, if there's a departure from the Indias, they have to mention what is the name of the Indias and the paragraphs of the Indias that they are departing from or they are not complying with. What is the reason for their non-compliance and what is the quantifiable effect of non-compliance to certain paragraphs of Indias. So there are qualifications in the audit report. Then please make sure that you present an explicit unreserved statement. But at the same time also tell them that certain paragraphs of Indias are not complied with. Give your reasons for non-compliance and also give a quantifiable effect of non-compliance. Clear? Is it mandatory to add the word standalone before each component of financial statements? Yes, because we clearly said under India's one that they have to prominently present whether the financial statements of the enterprise are presented on a standalone basis or on consolidated basis. Therefore, it is necessary to add the word standalone before each component of the financial statement. Company is an Indian company and it's preparing its financial statements in rupee. Is it necessary to write the financial statements that the financial statements are presented in rupee? Absolutely yes. Because we clearly said they have to prominently disclose the reporting currency and the level of rounding off as well. The company is having a turnover of 180 crores. Company wants to present absolute numbers. Because of the tax audit purpose, the company related filings and other internal purposes, company always needs figures and absolute numbers. Absolutely fine. You have an option to either choose absolute numbers or you can either round off. Guys, very latest yesterday, we have a change in Companies Act which makes rounding off compulsory. Which makes rounding off compulsory. But all those who are writing exams in this May and November 2021, you people don't have to bother about it. Clear? But rounding off is optional until yesterday. The company had sales transactions with 10 related parties during the previous year. However, during the current year, there is no transaction with respect to 4 related parties out of the aforesaid 10 related parties. Hence, the company is of a view that it is not required to disclose transaction with these 4 related parties because these transactions have, there is no transaction in the current, current year. Guys, remember you always present financial statements on comparative basis. So even though there is no transaction in the current year, they had transactions in the previous year. They have, therefore, they have to be presented as comparable. Clear? So let's see. First answer. Yes, the company, uh, an entity whose financial statements comply with Indias should make an explicit unreserved statement. The entity shall not describe the uh, financial statements as complying with Indias unless they comply with all the requirements. No. Should the company disclose that Mandatorily add the word standalone. There he says, no, it is required to, uh, for the financial statement that they are individual financial statements of the company. So just say that they are individual, that is sufficient. You don't have to add the word standalone. Now, looking at the third part, 
where he asked us should i present rupee or not yes you have to present display the presentation currency prominently on the face of the balance sheet can i present in absolute numbers yes it is mandatory for requirement under division 2 third one what about the related parties no as i expect that the indias permits or requires otherwise the entity shall present comparative information in respect to the previous period for all amounts reported in the current financial statements therefore an enterprise shall include comparative information for narrative and descriptive information which is relevant for understanding the current reporting period clear look at question number 2 then the company xyz is into construction of a turnkey project and has an operating cycle to be 18 months the company has certain trade receivables and trade payables which are receivable or payable within a period of 12 months from the date of reporting date on 31st of march 2012 in addition the following items and transactions took place during the financial year the company has some trade receivables which are due after 15 months from the date of balance sheet so the company expects that the payment will be received within the operating cycle guys when the payments are expected to be realized within the operating cycle they should be classified as current assets the company has some trade payables which are due for payment after 14 months from the balance sheet date the trade payables fall within the period of operating cycle though the company does not expect that it will be able to pay these payables within the operating cycle because of the nature of business is such that generally the project get delayed and the payments to customer also get delayed guys whether you are actually making the payment or not is irrelevant if the amount falls due that is sufficient it is expected to be paid within 14 days for 14 months is sufficient for us to call it as current liability the company has been awarded a contract of 100 crores as per the terms of the contract the company made a security deposit of 5% of the contract value with the customer of 5 crores on 31st march 2012 the contract is expected to be completed within 18 months time the aforesaid deposit is refundable back after 6 months from the date of completion of the contract guys look at this this contract after the completion of the contract he is giving you 6 months time to refund the money 18 months is the contract completion time though that means it is 24 months in total therefore this cannot be classified as current it should be classified as non current asset the company has certain contracts to third parties and has received a security deposit of 2 crores which are repayable on completion of the contract but if the contract is cancelled before the contract term of 8 months it becomes payable immediately however the company does not expect the cancellation of the contract since the company does not expect the cancellation of the contract and the contract term is 18 months and after completion of 18 months is this amount is refundable therefore it is a non current liability look at regarding the trade payables the company wants to present trade payables as current despite the fact that these receivables are 15 months time does the decision of presenting the same as current current asset correct answer is yes why because the operating cycle is 18 months yes but additionally the company also need to disclose the amount that are receivable within 12 months and after 12 months on the reporting date what about part b the company wants to present trade payables as non current despite the fact that they fall due within operating cycle does the decision of represent of presenting them under non current correct answer is no because they are payable within an operating cycle they fall due within an operating cycle therefore they have to be presented under current liabilities only security deposit can be presented as current no the security deposit should be presented as non current because it is repayable after 24 months can the security deposit of 2 crores taken from the company from the contractors be presented as non current no because they fall due immediately after 18 months therefore they have to be complete uh, that is within a operating cycle therefore they have to be presented as current now let's look at inter interim financial statements the production overheads of the financial year are 10000 normal expected production for the year after considering the planned maintenance after considering the planned maintenance and normal breakdown and also considering the future demand of the product is 2000 metric tons guys fixed production overheads is 10000 normal production is 2000 therefore per metric ton what is the fixed overheads allocated 5 rupees 
it is considered that there is no quarterly or seasonal variation. Therefore, normal expected production of each quarter is 500 metric ton. Fixed production overhead per quarter is 2500. How 2500? 500 into 5 rupees, exactly 2500. But the actual numbers which are achieved are 400 metric tons, 600 metric tons, 500 and 400 metric tons. In this case, how do you present? Guys, always we measure it at 5 rupees per metric ton. Therefore, first quarter, it will be 2000. Second quarter, it will be 3000. Third quarter, it will be 2500. And last quarter, it will be 2000. For 100 metric tons, which is lower than when the normal production is less than the normal production, that 100 metric tons into 5 rupees, 500 rupees is underabsorbed overheads. Such underabsorbed overhead should be charged to PNL. Since there is no cyclical or seasonal variation, Normal expected overheads of each quarter of 500 rupees per month. Production overheads per quarter is 2,500. Fixed production overhead should be allocated per unit of production in each quarter will be 5 rupees per metric ton. So 5 rupees per metric ton is 2,000, 3,000, 2,500 and 2,000. Underabsorbed overheads of 500 rupees will be straightforward charged to PN. ABC Limited manufactures automobile parts abc limited has a net profit of 20 lakhs in third quarter of 2011 following adjustments were made while computing net profit bad debts of 1 lakh incurred during the quarter 50 percent of bad debts have been deferred to next quarter guys these are not supposed to be deferred see these are not cyclical costs these are not expected to be deferred even in the annual financial statements if it is not expected to be deferred in annual financial statements, you are not supposed to defer it in interim financial statement. So the entire 1 lakh should be reduced in computing the profit of the current quarter. How much did he not consider? 50% profit, 50% bad debt he did not consider. That is 50,000. Therefore, 20 lakhs which is already existing should be reduced by 20 lakhs minus 50,000 rupees of bad debts which are deferred should not be deferred. So your net profit of the current year should be reduced by 50,000. An additional depreciation of 4,50,000 has been has resulted due to a change in method of depreciation. Guys, change in method of depreciation, 4,50,000 should be considered in the current quarter. An exceptional loss of 28,000 incurred in the third quarter, 50% of the exceptional loss has been deferred to the next quarter, which is not possible. So minus 14,000. Next one, 5 lakhs expenditure on administrative expenses pertaining to the third quarter are deferred to the fourth quarter which will have more sales. Therefore, fourth quarter is debited by higher expenditure. These expenditure are uniform throughout all quarters. So this kind of deferral is not possible. So again reduce the 5 lakhs. So therefore, the answer is 14,36,000. Check the last answer. Answer is 14,36,000. That should be the profit to be reported during the interim period of the third quarter. Entity reports uh, entity reports quarterly and earns 1,50,000 pre-tax profits in the first quarter but expects to incur a loss of 50,000 at the end of each remaining quarter. So next three quarters, he'll get 50,000, 50,000, 50,000 loss. First quarter, he got 1,50,000 profit. So what is the expected total profit at the end of the year? Zero. Correct? It is zero towards the end of the year. The entity operates in a jurisdiction where the average rate of tax is 30%. The management believes that since the entity has zero income in the year, its income tax expense will be zero. Well, is it correct or not? If not, calculate tax expense as per India's 34. Guys, remember guys, his intention is absolutely wrong. You have to measure it based on average rate of tax. So in the first quarter, I'll recognize a tax expense of 1,50,000 into 30%, which is 45,000. For the next three quarters, when the, uh, when the enterprise is making a loss of 50,000, I will recognize a negative tax expense of 15,000. So 45,000 tax expense in Q1, minus 15,000 tax expense in Q2, Q3 and Q4, ultimately tax expense will become zero. This is how I present it. 45,000 in first quarter, second, third and fourth quarter, negative 15,000 of tax expense has to be recognized in each quarter.
Look at questions on India S8. A carpet retail outlet sells and fits carpets to general public. It recognizes revenue when the carpet is fitted, which on an average is six weeks after the purchase of a carpet. It has decided to subcontract the fitting of carpets to self-employed fitters. It now recognizes revenue at the point of sale of carpet itself. So what is happening here? I am basically, I am only buying, selling the carpet. I am only fitting the carpet. Immediately after fitting the carpet, which it averagely takes six weeks, I used to recognize the sale of carpet. But now I am taking a decision of giving it to self-employed fitters. I will recognize revenue at the point of sale of carpet itself. Can the change is recognizing revenue a change in accounting policy? Absolutely no. It is only a change in circumstances which is requiring you to change a revenue recognition pro procedure. But there is no change in accounting policy whatsoever. So no retrospective amendments. ABC Limited received a demand notice on 15th of June for an additional amount of 28 lakhs from the excise department on an account of higher excise duty levied by excise department compared to the rate at which the company was creating a provision and depositing the same or the transaction related to 2011-12. The financial statements of 2011-12 were approved on 10th August. In July 2012, that is much before the date on approval, the company has appealed against the demand of 28 lakhs. The company is expected that the demand will be settled for 15 lakhs only. Show how the event bearing the financial state uh, will have an effect on financial year 2011-12. Whether these events should be considered as adjusting events or non-adjusting events. Look at the evidence. The demand notice arised only on 15th of June and he has gone on appeal in July itself. So the financial statements are adopted on 10th of August. Ultimately, these transactions have occurred after the balance sheet date, but before the date on which the financial statements are approved by the board of directors. So therefore, these are events occurring after balance sheet. Are they adjusting or non-adjusting in nature? The liability for payment of excise is existing on the date, but you have calculated it at a different rate, while the excise department is expecting a different rate from you. Therefore, this cannot be considered as an adjusting item. It should be considered as a non-adjusting, sorry. It should be considered as an adjusting item because the liability for payment of excise was existing even on the balance sheet date. Therefore, what do you do? Recognize a provision for 15 lakhs because that is a rate at which he is expecting to settle the demand. So create a provision for 15 lakhs as on 31st March. Events after reporting dates, favorable or unfavorable, that occur between the date of reporting date and the date on which the financial statements are approved by the board of directors and by the or the corresponding approving authority. In such case of both the entities are issues, those which provide evidence and those which are indicative of conditions. For the instant case, the demand notice has been received on 15 June, which is between the end of the reporting period and the date of approval. Therefore, it is an event after the reporting date. This demand for certain amount has been raised because of a higher rate of duty levied by excise department in terms of goods which are already manufactured during the reporting period. Therefore, the condition was existing on 31st March as the goods were manufactured on the reporting date on which the additional excise duty has been levied. Therefore, this should be considered as an adjusting event. So, therefore, the books of accounts have been adjusted to the extent of India's 37 principles by creating a provision to the extent of 15 lakhs. Regarding garment assistance. ABC is a garment company and is a first time adopter of India's. As per the previous gap, the contribution received by ABC Limited from the garment, guys, it's a garment company receiving a grant from the government which holds 100% shareholding in ABC in nature of promoter's contribution have been recognized in capital reserve and treated as a part of shareholder funds in accordance with AS12. State whether a similar treatment of promoter's contribution as per, as per India's 12 is also permitted under India's 20. Guys, India's 20 will never talk about promoter's contribution. We only spoke about two types of grants which is a monetary grant and non-monetary grants. No capital contributions by promoters will be considered as a grant. So since it is a promoter who is giving it to the government and the, who holds 100% share, it should be considered as an amount received from the promoter 
and recognized in the statement of changes in equity. Under other equity only, I will recognize it. I will not bring it to the PNL. You cannot apply any provisions of India S20 in this case because India S20 does not talk about promoter's contribution. Government received a grant of 10, uh, A Limited received a grant of 10 lakhs from the local government in 2011-12 as a subsidy for subsidy for selling goods at a lower price to a lower income group population in particular area for two years. A Limited account for the grant as income in 11-12. While accounting for the grant in the year 11-12, A Limited is reasonably assured that all the conditions will be complied with, will be complied with. Be careful. A limited is reasonably assured that all, all, condition, all the conditions attached to the grant will be complied with. However, in the year 2015-16, A found that they did not comply with the conditions. Therefore, the notice of refund of grant has been served on it. A limited has contested but lost in the case and therefore the grant is repayable. How will A limited reflect the repayment of grant in its financial statements? Guys, earlier I credited to PNL. Now since there is a refund of grant, I will have to debit the PNL. Rainbow Limited is carrying on various projects for the company has been received government assistance or in the process of receiving the same. The company has two grants, 1 lakh rupee each, relating to ongoing research and development projects. The first grant relates to clean river project which involves research into the effect of various chemical waste from the industrial area in Madhya Pradesh. However, no major steps have been completed by Rainbow Limited to commence, no major step have been taken by Rainbow Limited to commence the research as on 31st March. Guys, okay, since no major step has been taken, as of now, I will transfer this 1 lakh received to deferred government grant. As and when the research continues, I will keep on crediting it to PN. The second grant relates to commercial development of new equipment that is used for manufacture eco-friendly substitute for existing plastic products. Rainbow Limited is confident about the technical feasibility and financial viability of the new project which will be made available for sale in the market starting from April 13. In September, due to floods one of the factory, the entire production was lost and Rainbow was shut down for a period of three months. State government announced a compensation package to all manufacturing entities affected due to floods. As per the scheme, Rainbow is entitled to a compensation based on the average of previous three months sales prior to the floods which the company is required to submit an application on or before 30th June. The financial statements of Rainbow are adopted on 31st of May. So therefore, this they have not even submitted an application up to 30th June. The, the financial statements are already adopted on 31st of May itself. Suggest accounting treatment of two grants and the flood related compensation. First grant regarding Clean River Project. They did not undertake any activity till now. So what do you do? Involving research of various chemicals, 1 lakh is unconditional as no details relating to the, to the refund have been mentioned. Even though the research has not started or any major step has been completed, the research yet the grant will be recognized immediately in the PNL because there is no conditions attached to the grant. It's an unconditional grant. Alternatively, in case the grant is conditional, I don't know if it is conditional, then the grant will be recognized in the books as expenditure uh, sorry uh, over the period for which expenditure will be recognized okay so he is giving you both alternatives if you treat it as unconditional grant credit it to pnl but if you treat it as conditional grant then expenditure has not been incurred on research phase so transfer it to deferred government grant later on when expenditure is incurred you can credit it to the pn second grant regarding development of eco-friendly alternative depreciable asset as per the information given, the equipment is available for sale from April 2013 onwards. Hence, at the time, the grant relates to the construction of the asset should be initially recognized as deferred income. The deferred income should be recognized as income into the PNL over the useful life of asset. Flood related compensation. The Rainbow Limited has already submitted, uh, 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 was not able to submit uh, before 31st of May. So therefore, although the floods happened in 2011, loss was incurred, the entity should recognize the income for the government grant when the application is submitted and approved by the government. Since in 2011, the application is not submitted, 
then therefore rainbow should not recognize the grant income as the amount of grant is not re receivable it is not receivable as on 31st of march that will bring us to the end of our questions for your day